Welcome. What you're about to watch is one of the lessons in my Getting Started with Obsidian course, specifically the one on how to make Obsidian work for you. So I'm going to cover some of the workflows that I use, um, like my Smart Random Notes uh, setup, uh, how I use tag notes, and some other things to really uh, leverage Obsidian to make connections for yourself. If you want to support the channel, if you like this video as you watch it, the best way to do that is to take the course. If you go to curtismichael.ca slash membership, you can become a member and you get all my courses for free, or you can go to curtismichael.ca slash education if you just want to buy a single course for yourself. Thanks for watching. Enjoy this free lesson. In this video, we're going to go over a few things about how I think Obsidian can really work for you, how you can integrate it into your workflow so that you get the maximum benefit out of it, and just a few of my, my workflow tips that I use to get the maximum benefit from Obsidian. So one of the big things that I really like is the Smart Random Notes plugin. So I'm gonna go to Community Plugins, and this is already turned on, I'm just showing you how to do it. Check for updates, let's go to Browse, and we'll go Random Note, Smart Random Note. And the reason I like this is because it works with my saved searches, and so it actually bases the Smart Random Note feature off my saved searches. I find that better than the Random Note feature because the Random Note feature does not do that. So I actually have this loaded into Workspace and I showed it to you before. So I'll go load Workspace and I'm gonna go to random note. And this actually puts the search up here. I don't even really need that. So I can hide that. What I'm looking for over here is backlinks and stuff. And so I'd hit the random note. Now just, you know, look through what I have. So this is a writing idea. Well-meaning parents sit on kids, uh, smoothing all problems. So this is from, we don't want an easy cruise through life. Uh, we don't want an easy cruise through life, but parents are going to sit on top of their kids all the time, smoothing away any the ability for anything to go wrong. For me, this is the idea that we really, you know, baby children all the way up to like, you know, even their late teens, and we don't have, let them have any negative consequences to their decisions, negative anything in life. We like, you know, they get a bad mark and we're in talking to the teacher, which is not productive in my opinion. And then, then they learn that some other authority, not them, is supposed to solve other problems. And then they turn like whatever, 19, 20, they go off and they're like, suddenly have to solve their own problems. And this is a bad thing. So when I find an idea, and it's, I try to do this, I try to do this every week. I'm not as good at it as I hope. Um, but then I would actually go through and start to look for other ideas. So I would look, read through some notes. I'd think about what I've been reading. And I'd take some time with each one, uh, at least a couple minutes, and just look. So here's another one. Uh, this is the Data Detective. So I would even think about this as a book I read by Tim Hartford. I have reviewed it online. And I would just think like, is there anything else that I talked about in this book? And I'd scan through the note. Is there anything that needs to be broken out into a smaller piece um, into um, anything else that can help me just, you know, increase my web of knowledge. And I do that, you know, a couple times. Spotlight. I don't don't need that one. That's fine. Construction, right? What else? So a pattern language. This is for city construction. All right, and I would just kind of look through what else is in here that I maybe need to link. That's one of the ways that I really find it ha helps me link uh, long term. So Jeopardy as in. And so this is actually Jeopardy game. So now we don't have double matches, right? And this comes from a school values speed over depth. So even the SATs, the LSATs, uh, as talked about by Malcolm Gladwell in one of his podcasts, they value speed over depth. They don't want you to just take your time and think and have a good, strong answer. They want you to be as fast as possible. And so it actually valued, a lot of these tests actually value people that are fast, as opposed to people that are, can really do the jobs well. Which is funny because as you go to like your LSAT and as you get to like the highest judge levels, you need to be like, slow, methodical, think clearly about very complex issues as opposed to just being really quick. So that's one way I really uh, do it to make this work. And the other way is my tag notes. So I have two types of notes and then come back here. I have tag notes, which is like this event tag note, the 1982 Beirut massacre. I would see what else links to it. Only one right now, acceptance. Um, and these are all ideas that may or may not turn into something bigger later. They may be something, they may not be something. So even here, I'll look at it right now. I'm live. I'll just link this, social acceptance rejection. Just add another link there. Um, there's authors in here as well, right, in my tags. But really, it's the tag notes that are important. So addiction. What else do I have on addiction? Your brain has become hard to shake an addiction. Great. I'll make some more tags in here. And these are things, if I look to my graph view, 
that may be a big later. So if I go to my filters, or sorry, my groups, you can see that I have tag notes in green. And so as I am looking, I will actually look for what is big in green. So something is COVID-19, that's a big, bigger idea, something that I have linked to from a few different sources, right? One of them is the data detective, which has a bunch of links out. And you see there's a bunch of little ones in here, the illusion of explanatory depth, links out to a few other things. Um, I'll also look for uh, just for any note that's getting big, right? So this writing idea over here is getting bigger. The difference between education and indoctrination. So what is that difference? Um, what's the difference between education and indoctrination? Am I educating my kids or, or, am, in, or am I indoctrinating them? So right now I'll actually do this slide. We'll split vertically and I want to go to uh, K explainers. And I'll put this as an idea in here. between an education and indoctrination, because it's something that I want to chase down kind of longer term later on. And so I will look for things in my graph view that are continuing to collect um, weight, right? So this is a big one, this will be community. I knew that because it's one that I see often in notes because it is just a big topic that I kind of dig into, right? And there's some writing ideas around this as well. The good thing about the graph view is finding things that are just kind of off on their own. So books on race, I've read a few books on race, right? I've read The Color of Law, what else have I read? Um, it's not highlighting now. This one over here, this is why I'm no longer talking to white people about race, right? And we're getting some in here that are being talked about and I can see right here, there's a book and this book links off to some other ideas as well. Why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria is a book, but it's being linked to from the author it's being linked to from the Savvy Ally. So that gives it more weight, right? If I have multiple books that have linked to it, then it gives it more weight that I probably should be reading. And it's also linked to from what? Books on transgender, because that's also uh, been referenced in that category as well. And those are two of the big ways that I think that Obsidian can be made to work for you. Having a good uh, practice of going through your notes randomly just to see what's highlighted and see what you've learned new so that you can make more connections. And then really leveraging the graph view. I think a lot of people think it's really pretty, but they don't dig into how it can be used with doing some highlighting. And then the tag notes I find are just better. They're ideas that are going to go bigger. They are my thoughts. They are ways of categorizing information. Whereas notes or like someone else's thoughts on a topic. And so they often will link to a main tag note that I may expand on later, that I may dig into more, but they are not necessarily the main content of the notes that I want to be developing long-term for myself. They are other people's thoughts and the tag notes are more my thoughts or my ideas that will be developed long-term later on.